Okay, so for a number of tries, they're marketed by max try. We make an arbitrary function we call the func. And we're making that as a string. So you build up a string using the join on the empty string right there. And we take a character from this set of characters here called vocabulary or voc. And you take a random character chosen with the rand int function. Um, make sure it's a random character that's, or a random integer within the length of vocabulary, because you don't want to choose, you know. If vocabulary is only five characters long, you don't want to choose the thousandth character from that. Just give you an error. Um, and then we build up a string of max characters length. We build a lambda function. So the first line of the lambda function declares it, sticks that function string we just built in the middle of it, and then names the output y, called, names that result, or rez. Then we do this execute function, and we just run this string we built here and get the result. So 99 point some unknown fraction of these percent will just be nonsense, right? It'll be like x minus star plus three or something. Something that doesn't make any sense. It'll just get an error. So we couch everything in error statements. So every time something's nonsense, you just throw it away and move on. Every time you actually can evaluate that function, we append the sum of errors from our real array here, y, and the function we just calculated over that array, which we called result. So if the sum of those errors is pretty small, it means we have a reasonable approximation to that result. Um, you can see what we did here, uh, absolute of the lambda function we just generated minus the true function, and we sum all of those. There are multiple ways to handle this step here. Um, which we went over earlier, including map and reduce, and a couple other higher level functions. Uh, but we built up this list of tries, which for every true function that we created, records the error for evaluating it in the approximation. And then we do a little trick here to uh, sort, to find the most accurate solution. So here, um, our tries array here, this list, is going to have uh, a couple results where you know we tried to divide by zero, or you did something else stupid in there. Not us, but the computer program did. You would never do something stupid, of course. Um, and so if you try and do this just normally and then sort A, you might run into a few errors. It might be pretty volatile. So we do a little trick here where um, we know that numpy arrays handle not integers and infinite numbers pretty gracefully. So if you sort a numpy array of our tries result, um, it'll get a reasonable answer out. So we do that, and we return the approximation. So that's that function we have up here that approximates y on x. Let's use it. So I define our vocabulary to be this. Then I make an x array, which is just a range from minus 3 to 3. Then I say a real function is x squared plus x. So now I have real function on x array, and I approximate real function on x array using random sets from this vocabulary. If we run that, it spits out that it took us 32,807 tries, but we found that x times x plus x is functionally equivalent to x squared plus x. Uh, and this part right here, you see it also returns, um, where do I have it return? Oh, that might have fallen off the end down here. But it also returns the sum of errors right there. So if we have not found it, not found a very good approximation amongst all of our tries, this 0.0, .0 would be a much larger number. Let me try running it again. Sure. I'll try and change the number of tries. So I have it built up. Next try equals 100. 
So here, we didn't find it. <laughs> it was pretty close. <laughs> getting closer each time. I don't know how many, Joey suggested running some statistics, like seeing how many of these randomly formed statements are actually reasonable statements. Um, be easy to add in there, that hasn't been done. I want to see you get next star star two plus x. Ooh. Oh shoot. Alright. Apparently it takes a lot of tries. There, x plus x star x. I don't know if you're ever gonna get yeah. that before. <laughs> this is more x's, star x. If, so if you don't have a return statement, what by default returns from the comment? Uh, nothing. Okay. But why do you have this? If, uh, I, yeah, I think there's a return. Oh, there it is, it's just hidden in there. So yeah, if you take this out, It does the print statement, but then just when you run the generate statement, it doesn't feedback anything to standard. 